Hi, this is James. I'm going to do a walkthrough of Software Labs 6 through 11 in SDK. And we'll start off with Lab 6 where we create the first stage bootloader and the PMU. And we can see them both down here. They're already created. Making them was pretty straightforward where we do a um, new application project. And when this comes up, all that we really do for the first stage bootloader is come in here and choose it and this explains how it's going to make it for us and we hit finish and it makes the new application project and the, the first stage bootloader itself and the same with the PMU is new application project and we do come in and we change it to PMU okay and when we hit next it says it's going to make a platform management un uh, unit firmware and when we hit finish on that, it generates these two things here. Um, then lab seven, we create our boot image so that we can run untethered. So what we do is, um, and the idea is that we don't have to boot it from JTAG. So it'll actually run by itself. And if I switch over here, all right, so here's my board. Um, Here's the SD card slot. So to make it boot from this, we hit this dip switch right here, and it'll boot from SD. So we plug the SD in once it's imaged, and we can do that. I also show my click mezzanine boards here. Um, it's the actual click boards, and then the mezzanine is this part. So with all of this unplugged, we plug the mezzanine in. And I've got the LCD board here, which goes there, and the accelerometer, which goes right here. And that's assembled and ready to go. So I'll just plug that back in. Reset on there. Okay. So the test peripherals, and we want to create our boot image. So we come in here and we hit create boot image. And I've already done this, so it already comes in populated. But we did have to make a new one. And we had to manually select our PMU. So the first stage bootloader comes in already. That has to be at the top of this list because the order matters for the boot image because it has to go in order through all of these to get to our, our app itself. So the first stage bootloader, the PMU gets added, then we've got our hardware wrapper, and then the app itself, and we hit create image. And when that's done, it exports the image file itself, uh, which we then put on our our, our uh, SD card. So I've got it here and once that's done I put it into the board and launch it and up it runs. Alright, um, so lab 8 was next which is importing and exporting and when I talk about that I'm gonna go ahead and get this up and running. Alright, I'll see the backlight control with interrupt. So I'm just gonna let that program well, I talk about Lab 8. Lab 8 was importing and exporting. So SDK is directory specific and it doesn't do well with just simply copying and pasting the folders from the hard drive. But it does provide a lot of ways to get them in and out. So we can do File, Export, and we can choose things like breakpoints, right? So if we have breakpoints already created, we can choose them and then export them uh, to whatever folder you want. Then likewise you would import them with file import. You'd come choose breakpoints and you can import them. You can also do launch configurations uh, which are essentially um, all of these. If you've created specific configurations for how you want to launch and you know if you want it to reset or not, you can export those. And you can also um, import and export the programs themselves. Okay, so I could do file system and I could choose which apps I want to export. I can select all and it would do everything that I've got loaded in here. And I could export them to a folder and then re-import them. Okay, so let's see where this is at with running. Um, so that was lab 8. Lab 9 is interrupts. Um, so we made LCD backlight control 
and I'm not sure if that launched all the way. Let's just try this again here. See so backlight control. We'll hit run. So interrupts, as we learned, um, trigger the system to uh, stop what it's doing and go handle something else, like a hardware interrupt, and then come back and continue operation. So if you had to catch certain events that happen quickly, this is a good way to do it. Um, you have to be careful on how you do it and make the code as quick and clean as possible. Uh, let me clear the screen so that you don't miss anything else because you have to disable interrupts when you start handling them so you, your interrupt service routine does not itself become interrupted. The processor also has to save all the current state of where it's at and then when the interrupt is done handling it reloads that information back from memory so it can continue on. Alright, so in this lab uh, we updated our LCD backlight control. We started off with a non-interrupt version and then we added the interrupts manually to it. I think I might need to relaunch this. Okay, here we go. All right. So we manually added interrupt handling. Okay, so I can I can choose zero, one, two, three, and you can see the screen on here. And if I hit a valid key, it turns on. An invalid key, it turns off. And because of the way the code's written, it does flicker the LCD because it uh, tries to write a value that's invalid before it clears it out. But that's how it works. And this lab basically matches what we did in the hardware lab, uh, although when I did that particular lab I didn't have the clickboard mezzanine with me. Alright, so that's that. Um, then the next one is the file system. So we're up to lab 10 now. And uh, while I get that one up and running, I'm going to launch Lab 11, which is our sensor interface. So run as. There's our sensor interface. So I'll get that running. All right, so Lab 10 is file system. And what we do in, in, la in that lab is we read the temperature from the board itself, not from the mezzanine or anything like that, but we re read it from there and we write it out to a CSV file. Um, and I've got that here. Uh, it seemed to have a problem with the carriage return on the new line where it didn't want to write them out properly. So the CSV I got, which I show right here, ended up being pretty messy and I got a lot of bad data in it. So it's actually all one line and it was a little bit janky and hard to read but it was able to make the file um, and we can see here there's my CSV so it was able to make it and, and write it out so that was good okay uh, the other thing I'll show is in here this is our system.mss for that particular one and we had to add that library in here to the board support package, generic fat, uh, file system library, and there are settings for it. For instance, you can make it be read-only um, if you needed to. All right, the last one is lab 11 with the click mezzanine board. Um, so now instead of instead of this with the LCD, we're looking at this one here, which is an accelerometer. And what we do in the lab, and this is running now, is it. Uh, over SPI it goes out to this board and it asks it what the temperature is because it has a, a sensor inside. And so we get a high byte and a sorry a high byte here and a low byte. It combines them into the raw value and then it converts that into degrees Celsius. And we can see some of that here um, in the program. So this is where it will uh, it'll pull it. It checks the, um, make sure it has good data and then it will convert it. Um, into Celsius and it displays it out on the screen. So that's what we did in these lessons. Thank you.